We're going to go to Jason Anderson first. Go ahead, Jason. Uh, hi, Blacko. Thanks hey. for speaking with us today. Um, I, I wanted to start off by asking a little bit about your plans uh, in the midfield with um, you have one player in camp who plays the six. Every, there are players who have played there in the past but don't play there with their clubs uh, that often these days. Um, I was wondering your perspective on who might have to rotate in there or step in in case of injury. Yes, uh, we do have a player uh, at six that uh, we're very comfortable with and we feel like uh, is uh, going to be very good for us uh, now and in the future. Uh, Andy has been tremendous in camp, uh, performing very well, and uh, we're excited about her. Uh, but we also have players that, that uh, have had um, chances uh, to play at that position uh, in the club environment in the past, and also we, we've worked with... Uh, here in our camp, uh, it may not be a single six like uh, in the in the case when Andy's playing there. We may have to play uh, double six or something uh, something of a hybrid between six and eight, uh, where two players will take uh, will take the responsibilities. And uh, obviously, uh, we've thought about that, and uh, we feel comfortable that we do have a plan uh, going forward. Thank you, Jason. Black, can you scooch a little bit to your left in the middle of the frame there? Sure, I can. Just a little bit. Oh, no, sorry, to your right. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. All right. All right, next question goes to Sean McCaffrey. Go ahead, Sean. Coach, thank you for taking the time out to speak with us today. Typically, you have an advantage when you play at such an altitude as this sporting, basically a mile up in the air. Columbia has their fields and a lot of it's mountainous. Do you feel that you'll gain any advantage just due to that in and of itself? Uh, we were, uh, when we came here, we didn't come here to take any advantage uh, or to have any advantage over Colombia, but we, we came here to prepare for uh, the games uh, in the tournament for CONCACAF games. So everything that we do here, whether it's training, games, uh, we see it as a preparation uh, for the tournament. So uh, with that being said, uh, uh, it's irrelevant for us whether we have any advantage in uh, these two upcoming games. Uh, like, uh, like I said, for us, it's just a preparation for the tournament. Thank you, Sean. Let's go to Jonathan Tannewald. Go ahead, Jonathan. Thanks, Aaron, and thanks, Bracco, for the time. Um, Bracco, you're the manager of a sports team uh, that is always paying attention JT, you just, you just broke up a little bit. Start again. Sorry. Yeah. Can you hear me better now? A little bit. All right. Um, go tell Wi-Fi. I'll do the best I can. But uh, Vlatko, in the position that you're in in this U.S. locker room on a day like this with the news coming out of the Supreme Court, what do you see your role as as a male manager of a women's sports team, and how do you give your players the space and time to – say the things and have the reactions that they want to have. Obviously, waking up uh, and seeing the news uh, that came out is not something that, that makes me happy with uh, someone that has a wife and uh, two daughters uh, uh, who wants uh, them to have a choice uh, and uh, make decision, the decision they want. Uh, uh, but uh, being in the environment with, uh, with uh, this uh, female athletes, uh, I just feel like uh, it's my responsibility to to support them uh, with uh, with everything uh, that uh, they have uh, right now, that, and uh, I want to be there for them. Thanks, JT. Let's go to Greg Eichelin. Go ahead, Greg. Hello, Blacko. Um, a couple of. Uh... Developments from your home base in Kansas City that I wanted to have you react to. One was the uh, Men's World Cup announcement for 2026. And two, did you have a chance to get a sneak preview of the Kansas City current facility before the ribbon cutting? And um, how much does that advance the women's game, in your opinion? So first on the World Cup, obviously very happy uh, that uh, the World Cup is coming in Kansas City. It's just a testament of uh, the how much uh, the, the game has grown in the city and uh, the support that uh, the game has uh, from uh, the Kansas Cityans. 
In terms of the, the facility from Casey Current, uh, yes, I did have a chance to um, to look at it, to to uh, to go through and uh, see it uh, before it um, opened up, and I think it's uh, absolutely incredible. It's just. Uh, uh, it's just uh, it was just nice to to go around and look at it and think where this game was or this league was or this team were uh, ten years ago when I when I first started working uh, with the in NWSL and where it is now. But it's not just the league; it's the, like I said, the game itself, uh, the women's soccer game, and uh, has grown so much. And thanks to uh, thanks to clubs and owners uh, like uh, Angie and Chris. Uh, uh, who are con uh, consistently uh, pushing the pushing the standards? Uh, this great uh, this game is uh, gonna grow even more. Very happy uh, for what uh, they are doing, for what Kansas City is doing, but also very happy with uh, what uh, other clubs uh, or the new clubs like San Diego and LA are doing, and uh, excited for the future. Thank you, sir. Lucko's already the ambassador, the unofficial official ambassador of World Cup 26 in Kansas City. Um, let's go to uh, Andrew Jones. Go ahead, Andrew. Thank you as always, Aaron, and I'm glad that you bestowed that to uh, Lucko and being KC's um, ambassador, being, being a great ambassador for KC all the way. Uh, Lucko, um, just your thoughts in regards to getting for the first time some of the new players in the camp and how you felt how they reacted in terms of Taylor, in terms of seeing Carlson, how they've been so far in terms of their training, um, as well as how you viewed the end of LSL season so far with, as you mentioned, um, seeing the success of at least San Diego thus far, LA so far too. But just your thoughts in regards to how the season is shaped so far. Yeah, so, so first, the group of players that are new in camp uh, are doing very well. Uh, at times, we feel like we overwhelm them with uh, information, but they, they've been uh, uh, so great in absorbing uh, as much information as possible uh, because it's not easy to, to just come in in the environment and feel like you know uh, you know everything or you can retain everything that, that, is, give, that is given to you. But uh, I think they, they've done an incredible job in the, it shows when they uh, when they get on the field. Um, in terms of the league, uh, I'm excited. I, I really am excited because um, once again, uh, NWSL shows one why is one of the best league uh, in the world is because of the unpredictability and um, be, uh, because of the competition. I mean, I, if I'm not uh, mistaken, between uh, the first team uh, on the standings and the last team on the standings, it's like eight, nine points. That that never happens in the, in any league. And uh, I can tell you right now, I know North Carolina is the last one on the standings. I would not be surprised if you if you see them uh, get up and be in the you know, top three, four teams uh, just because... Uh, that's how this league uh, functions. Uh, anyone can uh, beat anyone on a, on a given day. And uh, uh, now in terms of San Diego, you mentioned, uh, I'm not surprised. Uh, I'm not surprised at all. First, uh, you know, knowing, uh, knowing Jill and how competitive she is, uh, we knew that she's going to build a good environment, uh, put a good product on the, on the field. And uh, obviously, you know, a lot of, lot of credit to, to Casey and the players, uh, that are players that are there. And, uh, the, you know, needless to say, uh, Alex Morgan being in the best form uh, of uh, of her life in the, in the, in, the, in terms of the league performances, uh, who is uh, who is killing it and uh, scoring goals for fun. Thank you, sir. Let's see. Last two from Blacko. We'll go to Joe Lowry, and then we'll go back to Mike DeCourcy. Go ahead, Joe. Hey, thanks, Aaron, and thank you, Blacko, for taking the time. Yep. Really appreciate it. Um, Looking at sort of more big picture about this team and how you all want to play heading into this tournament and in general, when your team's without the ball, how would you describe their philosophy defensively? What specific rotations or movements or, or traits on an individual level are you looking for from your players? So one thing that we say uh, when we're without the ball is we want to minimize the the opponent's uh, time on on the ball. So with that being said, that we. Uh, we have uh, this one uh, uh, saying or term that we use is we attack without the ball. 
So we don't defend for our lives. We don't uh, we don't defend our goal. We attack, and uh, that's the mentality that we have. Uh, we do want to get in uh, in people's faces. We don't you know we don't want to allow them to 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 think and have uh, have time to think. So that's um, that's the mentality. That's the mindset of the players. And I don't think. Uh, that's uh, that's any it's anything new. I mean that's that's the, the 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 mentality of this team or has been mentality of this team since day one 30 years ago. Uh, it's the culture of the of this team. It's the culture of this country. We you know I don't think we we know how to sit back and be passive. It's uh, you know on the front foot going at uh, going at people and uh, you know being uh, being aggressive and intense. Thanks, Joe. All right, we're going to finish up with Vlaco uh, before we get to Megan Rapino with Mike DeCorsi. Go ahead, Mike. Let's go with, with how Alex has played uh, through the first several months of the NWSL season. Are you seeing anything different from her in why she's being so successful? Obviously, you know, she's been through a lot the last several years to get to this place. Um, and how, whatever you're seeing, how is there anything that you guys need to do to take the best advantage of that with a largely reshaped team. So the thing with Alex is, uh, I mean, uh, Alex uh, uh, has always been good. Uh, you know, obviously as a professional athlete, sometimes it's not it's not easy to be in the best form for you know ten years uh, in your in your career, and sometimes. Uh, it's uh, because of the environment, sometimes because of the players around you. Sometimes it's uh, just uh, <clears throat> simple motivation. I mean, it's hard to, to motivate yourself or to commit to this game for 10 years uh, every day, uh, every, every day of, the, of your life, every, uh, every hour, every minute that you spend on, on, the, on the field. And I feel like uh, uh, this time uh, there is something else that motivated uh, motivated Alex to to show what she can do, and uh, she is uh, enjoying the moment. And uh, as uh, Alex as and uh, and uh, as any other forward, when they feel it, they took they take full advantage of it.